Hi friends, welcome back. This is Santosh Kumar. Today we are going to start some miscellaneous topics. Uh, I think I'll not comment on the numbers of topics, but let me cover one by one. So first topic we are going to discuss today is sensitivity. So here is the sensitivity. What it gives? It gives relative variation of parameters. What I mean is, see, this is the sensitivity of transfer function. This is the TF for the transfer function with respect to parameter G. You know very well what is the G. G is the path introduced. Okay. If this is your system R and open system I can say C. So this G with respect to G what is the variation in transfer function? It means this is the study we are going to do in the overall transfer function. Suppose for the closed loop control system, I am writing the transfer function you know very well. This is the formula. You are very familiar with this now. So this is the overall transfer function and it comprised by two parameters actually. The GS, the open loop parameter and the, the feedback ele element that is HS, isn't it? So only two things are here in the transfer function formula. So what will be the change? What will be the change in transfer function if any one of them will change? Means if G, variation in G, variation in H. So what will be the respective variation in the transfer function? This is nothing but the sensitivity of the system, isn't it? So denoted by like this is transfer function divided by, not divided by actually, this is the variation in transfer function with respect to G and the formula is given the percentage change in transfer function divided by percentage change in G. This G is nothing but this one only. Okay, so percentage change in T, F, percentage change in uh, G. Okay, so if I'll say the five percent give me the five percent of hundred suppose what you will do five divide by hundred isn't it and this is the five percent of hundred isn't it so I'll get the five at the output similarly the percentage change in transfer function will be del tf divide by tf or not into hundred isn't it percentage change in transfer function like this and divide by percentage change in g parameter isn't it this is this will be the formula here this shows the change and if you are looking for the percentage so for the overall transfer function you will see what is the percentage of this isn't it so finally the formula will be like this, this G will go up and del G. So can I write this transfer function del G into G by TF. Can I write this? So this is the formula for sensitivity with respect to G. Similarly, with respect to H also you have the sensitivity. And for that, the formula will be del t now i'm not using tf i'll use the t okay so understand this so del h and h by t okay so okay these are the miscellaneous topics we are going to discuss so formulas now the simple formula of the sensitivity and this is if you are uh, you know calculating sensitivity with respect to G so formula will be del T del G into this G will go here this T will come here this is the simple formula instead of G if you have H so put H here okay now we are going to calculate this thing for the transfer function we have for the closed loop transfer function you know the formula very well that is GS 1 plus GS HS 
isn't it? Now we'll calculate the sensitivity of this with respect to G and H. So sensitivity with respect to G first, I'll calculate of this transfer function. Okay, for the time being, I'll use the T only. So the formula says you need to calculate this. Okay, so means you have to differentiate the transfer function with respect to G. So you'll get this term. You have G already and you have T also. So just differentiate this. Why I'm going to differentiate? Because this is my formula. So I have to differentiate this term. This term means this T with respect to G. So in numerator 1 plus GH whole square. 1 plus GH will come here. Okay. And with respect to G. So this will be. 1 only, isn't it? Minus. Next time I will keep G as it is and differentiate this one. So H will come. This is a simple differentiation. You know very well. I hope so. So 1 plus GH square. Here you are getting like this. Now put everything here. We will get 1, 1 plus GH whole square into G. What if the G? G is G. Now what is the transfer function? The transfer function is 1 plus gh. Isn't it? This g will cancel this and 1 time 1 plus gh will cancel 2 times of 1 plus gh. Finally, you will get the transfer function variation due to open loop parameter g is 1 divided by 1 plus gh. If you want to remember it, you can else you can derive it. Okay, so this is the simple Siddha Satcha formula. Okay, in the examination, they'll give change in G, they directly they'll ask the sensitivity, so it will be better to remember this formula. Okay, similarly, if you will do the sensitivity calculation of the transfer function with respect to G, what you will get, I'm writing directly here, there is GH1 plus GH. So by this observation, I can say, see, the sensitivity due to open loop parameter was simply 1 divided by 1 plus gh. But here the same parameter is going to multiply with gh. So always the variation because of the feedback element is more than this. So I can say the feedback network is more sensitive than forward path or the forward network. Okay, so you can write here the conclusion. This will be always greater than the sensitivity of the transfer function due to forward path gain. Okay, so, so this is the conclusion of the sensitivity part. Next, I'll come to the, the topic name is dominant pole analysis. We do not have much questions from this background, but for the concept clarity, this is important to learn this. Okay. So, what is the dominant pole analysis? Friends, suppose you have given with the transfer function k divided by s plus 1, s plus 6, s plus 7. So, this single transfer function has three poles, isn't it? So, one is here, minus 1 and 2 are minus 6 and minus 7. Okay, so what the dominant pole analysis uh, says, actually friends, the outcome of this transfer function or the output of this transfer function, whatever input you will apply to this, the output will be affected more by the pole which is near to the origin, this pole. Okay, means Whatever content will be there in the output, 99% of that content will be, belongs to this one only. Okay. This two will be negligible. Why I am going to tell you. See, if you will divide this or, you know, if you will take the partial fraction and you will make the individual terms like S plus 1 and uh, it's kind of k s plus 6, let's take it b plus c s plus 7. 
okay this is the transfer function i have when you will take it in the time domain let's take it in time domain it will be a e to the power minus t u t if you all people will agree with me and it will be 6 t u t plus it will be c e to the power minus 70 okay so why we are going to neglect this and how we can neglect these two things what is the procedure i'm going to tell you but before that what i said here i'll show you why i'm saying like this see friends is now if c whatever transfer function of the output from some system we are taking we are taking at the you know after some time t equal to zero you apply the input and after some time the time five times of time constant four times of time constant you're taking the output means suppose this transfer function i'm looking at suppose let's take two only it will be e a e to the power minus two ut b e to the power minus 12 t and this is the 12 plus c e to the power minus it will be 14 calculate these two values these two values will be very near to zero so in the you know the time domain specification of the system the effect of these two poles are negligible the effects of these two poles why just calculate it check it once if you have calculator please take the value of e to the power minus 12 it will be 0 0.000 and something it will be very near to 0 actually so is there any effect of these two poles on the outcomes of the system no so we can neglect this so which pole will be dominant and or i can say will share the effect of in the output which is the dominant pole so according to the dominant pole analysis i can remove these two things but there is a procedure how to remove i'm going to tell you okay so condition is how to check the poles are dominant or not see the pole this pole suppose this is the p1 p2 and this p3 this p2 should be five times or more than p1 then only we can do this means the condition should be satisfied like this this is the p2 p2 should be greater than or equal five times of p1 this is the condition of dominant pole then only we can use dominant pole condition if this condition is not satisfied means instead of this suppose you have minus two also so you can't remove this two the effect of this two will be there in the output now the situation is will be not like this 99 percent shareholder is the p1 not like this now it will be reduced let's take it 70 20 and 19 percent share will be with two and one percent will be hold by this two okay like this so now these two are the dominant poles. so condition should be satisfied and the condition is the 5 p1 should be less than equal to p2 isn't it this is the master condition so based on this condition i'll take one example and then show you how to remove this how to remove this we can't do directly okay be careful here is the question given the transfer function of the system is given 5 divided by s plus 5 s square plus s plus 1 and the question is the second order approximation of the transfer function is using dominant pole concept is as I told you, the dominant pole is the pole which is near to the origin. Okay. And the condition we already discussed, isn't it? So here for this question, if you'll observe, first of all, I'll tell you how to give the direct answer of this. The dominant pole based approximation of this system will be, means your answer will be, Whenever you got like this in the system, what you will do is you will remove this from the system, but you will keep this constant part. This is the direct matter I'm telling you. Whenever you will get instead of this, suppose you have S plus 7 also. So you will keep 5 and 7 into the system and you will remove the everything. So when this will go, it will give 
a contribution of 5 and then it will go out. S square plus A is plus 1. Okay. It will go from the system by giving something to the system and that is the part of it. And that part is 5. Okay. This 5 and 5 will cancel out. You will get S square plus A is plus 1. This is your answer. 2 marks problem. Hardly 15 seconds you will take the answer it. Okay. You will take only 15 seconds to answer it and the approach I told you, you have to do like this. Okay. But, 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 but condition you have to check it and the condition is the P2 should be greater or equal to 5 times of P1. In this case, yes, that condition is fulfilled. See, here you have two poles and these two poles will be minus 1 by 2 plus minus uh, 0.5j if I am right. Okay, I am just taking, you will understand me. This is suppose minus 1 by 2. So, these two poles are dominant poles, but this, this pole is not dominant. Okay, so that is why in our system, we are considering these two poles, isn't it, but not this. So, whenever this will go, it will give this constant part into the system and will go out. This condition should be fulfilled. Yes, this condition is for this system or for this question, this condition is fulfilled. Okay. So, so I can apply the dominant pole concept and the procedure I told you here. Now, why we are doing like this? So, we will check this behind the scene. Okay. Wait a minute. The transfer function we have in our hand is 5 uh, j omega plus 5 and here this part is s square plus a s plus 1 keep it as it is okay find out that you know the magnitude of this it will be 5 it will be omega square plus 5 square and here s square plus s plus 1 as we discussed earlier we are putting the values very low value omega equal to 1, 2, omega equal to 3 because when you will put omega equal to or t equal to time, time equal to you are putting there very close, isn't it? So, here you have to keep omega equal to 0, the minimum frequency we are talking about, okay? So, at the steady state, suppose uh, we are talking about the steady state output t equal to infinity, omega equal to 0 should be there into the system isn't it? Or I can say for the very low frequency I am talking about, so what you will do is, when you will keep omega equal to, this omega is very low, you know, so omega square will become very very low, so 5 divided by only 5 square you will remain with, see, omega square is very very, you know, uh, it is, I can say 1, ok. So, you will have like this, s square plus s plus 1, and this will cancel out this. Finally, you will have s square plus s plus 1. So, better to do this direct, directly like this. If you have whatever number of poles you have, does not matter. What you will give is, you will keep the constant part here only and that particular pole will go out. Instead of this, suppose you have two poles which are dominant pole. See, the condition is like 5 s plus 2 s plus 1 and s plus 7 ok so by approximation the transfer function can be like this s plus 2 s plus 1 this was not dominant pole these two are the dominant poles so I kept as it is but this is not into the system but giving the 7 into the system like this. This is the approach. Okay friends. So, this is all about this two topics today. I will come with the next topic and the next video. We will meet in the next lecture. Till then, take care and bye.